Okay, 7.2 applications of exponential functions. So when we talk about growth, talking about the rate of growth of a population. This is proportional to the size of the population. Okay, this is exponential growth, right? So we're growing at a rate that is proportional to the size of the population. Okay, that is exponential growth. So P of T, the population at time T is equal to P naught, which is your starting population, okay? This is how big your population is at time equal to zero. That's the starting population. Multiplied by A raised to the T, where A is the base. This is the rate of growth. Whatever that rate is, to find the base, you do one. Okay, I'm sorry. You do one plus the rate for growth and minus the rate for decay. Okay, so one is your starting point. Um, you start out with 100% of whatever you have and if you're growing, it's like 1.05 or something. As your base, you add 0.05, that 5% growth rate. If it's a decay, you're taking 5% away. So 1 minus 0.05, that's 95% growth rate. It's shrinking each time by 5%. The T here represents time. And the time is in the units. Okay, the units are in the context of the problem. So your units, time could be days, months, years, hours, seconds, minutes, whatever the unit is in the problem, that's what you're gonna use for your uh, model to that you're gonna set up using this formula right here, okay? So the population is the initial population times your growth rate raised to how long your growth rate is gonna last for, okay? So we've got an example here. A biologist grows bacteria in a petri dish. She begins with a thousand bacteria, which grows in population for the first five hours exponentially. If the population doubles every hour, how many bacteria are there after two and a half hours? Okay, anytime you have a word problem, first thing I want you to go through is find all the numbers. First number I see, you begin with a thousand bacteria. Okay, so you're beginning with a thousand bacteria. So here's my formula. Write down what you know. P of T equals P naught A to the T. Okay, so you begin with a thousand. And then in the first five hours, you're told that it grows exponentially. So you know your model is going to be an exponential model for the first five hours. That's what you're told. That's how I know to use this formula right here. Okay. If the population doubles every hour, my doubling rate, the rate is double. You're doubling each hour. Okay. How many bacteria are there after 2.5 hours? So my time is hours, okay? Here, T is equal to 2.5. What else do I have? I've got my initial population, P naught is 1,000. So I have 1,000 and I have something raised to the 2.5. Well, what is my A? My A is the doubling rate. That's the rate I'm doubling each time, okay? So I type this into my calculator. 
So P of 2.5 is equal to, well, let's, let's type it into our calculator. 1,000 times 2 raised to the 2.5, enter. 565685, five, okay? So I'm not going to have a part of a bacteria, so I'm going to round up to the whole number, bacteria. 5657. Five, so 5657 five, bacteria. Round to the nearest bacteria here. Whatever the rounding tells you to do in the problem, that's what you'll do, okay? Round to what makes sense. All right, and that's all there is to it, okay? Not too bad. Let's talk about radioactive decay. Radioactive decay. Okay? Radioactive decay, when we're talking about a decay function, we know our base A, our growth rate, is between 0 and 1. We're not doubling, we're decaying here. This isn't exponential growth anymore. So that was an expo growth problem. Okay, that was a growth problem. The bacteria grows, right? The virus grows, whatever. Radioactive substance decreases over time as the substance decays into other elements. Okay, so you've got some radioactive substance in everything, right? Um, and over time, that decays, it goes away. You put a body in the ground, over time it decays, it goes away. So you have your A of T equal to A naught times A to the T, where A of T is the amount of the given substance at time equal to T, and A naught is the initial amount at t equal to zero, okay? So let's determine the base A that describes this decay function here, okay? Before we get to that base A, I wanna talk about the radioactive carbon dating, all right? So some of you have heard of carbon dating, it's where carbons go out on dates together, hot dates, right? Oh man, this guy's so lame. Okay, that's all right. Radioactive carbon-14 is found in every living plant and animal. That's why we use this element as our dating element, all right? So if we want to determine how old something is, how long ago before it died, then all we got to do is measure how much radiocarbon-14 is in it because if it was a living animal or plant, it's got radiocarbon-14 in it. This technique is used to estimate how long ago some organism died, okay? So how long ago did it die? Because as soon as the organism dies, that's when it starts releasing its amount, its fixed amount of carbon-14. Now there's something called a half-life. The half-life is how much time it takes for half of the carbon-14 to disappear, okay? So... Say, you know, you got a person, you got Bob here. Bob has got a smile, but, you know, Bob, you know, uh, falls off some bad luck and uh, Bob's no more. Now, what maybe Bob has 10 um, grams of carbon-14 inside of him. Now, after... 5,728 years, Bob's body is going to be crusty looking, right? After 5,000, almost 6,000 years, right? So after that amount of time, Bob's only got 5 grams of carbon-14 in him after 5,728 years. But then another, so let's look at a timeline, right? So it's like, let's just say it's the year 2000. Okay, so this is the year that Bob goes bye-bye, okay? So he's got 10 grams here. After 5,000, 
728 years, so that'd be 7728, year 7728. Bob only has 5 grams of carbon-14 left, okay? Then to get to this next part right here where Bob... Oh, Bob is really... Uh, messing up here where he's only got two and a half grams. That's the half-life. We got to an add another 5,728 years I'm gonna need a calculator for that seven seven two eight plus five seven two eight So if I did that right 13,456 years later, that's a lot of years, right? Okay, and then Next, you know, Bob, oh, he's starting to look all crinkly, right? Oh, no, right? So half of this is 1.25 grams, and I add another 5,728 years to get half of the half-life of that half-life, right? 5,728 again, that's 19,000. 184. That's a long time. That's like that's like 18,000 years. Like that's like three times, four times longer than recorded history, right? So that's a long time to go out. So really, even if there's just a little bit of carbon 14 left in that uh, fossil or whatever they've got, they can backdate and say, well, a current one would have this amount. Um, but it's only got 1.25, therefore it, this thing is like 17,000 years old approximately, right? So this is all based off of assumptions because nobody has lived this long, right? So we've got to use science to try to guess um, the age of something that nobody's been around long enough to see how long it was, okay? So this is all based off of um carbon dating and that's kind of your idea of how carbon dating works right so maybe you know i want to figure out what that base a is okay so if you think about it a to the t is a naught a to the t right so you're starting at some value if i start at a value my starting value time equal to zero i get a to the zero a, a naught, A to the zero, right? Which is just A naught. That's the initial starting amount. Okay, so, so A zero, that's your initial starting amount. That's what that says, okay? Now, after 5,728 years, what happens to A zero? A zero gets cut in half. Okay, there's only half of it left, right? We started with 10, and after 5,728 years, I have 5, right? So what do I know? At A of 5,728, I get A0 times A to the what? 5,728, right? But we know this amount right here is the half-life, it's half of what we started with, A0, A0, right? Now I wanna solve for A, so I need to divide both sides by A0. And what happens here? The A0s cancel, it doesn't, what I'm saying here is it doesn't matter how much there was initially, really all you have is the half equal to that unknown base raised to however long the half-life is, okay? So now what we can do is we can take the 5,728 root of both sides to solve for A. And so A is roughly equal to one half raised to the one over 5,728. And you can type that in your calculator and you're gonna get roughly 0.999879. So what does that tell me? That tells me for carbon-14, okay, the half-life formula, A of T, the decay formula, is your initial 
times 0.999879 to the T. That's the formula you use to plug in to figure out that half-life there. Okay, so kind of interesting. All right, guys, we're going to stop that there.